Just looking at some of my old paintings, I found this one on me on my blog from about five years ago, and I thought I'd have a go at this one today. So all the usual gear, you'll see all the colours and brushes and paper on the video description underneath. So looking at it again, we just I'm just going to use it as just a general guideline. I'm not going to do an exact copy of it. Um, so. Got some distant hills there, faintly visible, far away, and then sort of stronger tones in front of it. This tree line here, got this wall, sort of dry stone wall along this way. Little building, uh, little figures walking off towards. So let's let's uh, see how we get on. So I'm going to start off by giving the paper a good. Well, not too much water, just enough so it will stretch it so you won't get that crinkly effect as it all does all sort of shrivel up. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into some raw sienna, a bit of lizard and crimson as well just to vary it slightly. Bring that down. Just going to bring that down bottom to, to the bottom of the page. Come on, like that. I'm going to clean the brush, take the excess off on my tea towel, and I'm going to go for a bit of blue, a bit more crimson with the blue. Brush that in there, something like that. Put it there. Bit more. Bit more blue. Maybe a touch of. Actually, I'm just going to dip the tips in. Just dip the very, very tip. When I say this, I mean literally just less than a millimetre into the water, just to loosen everything up. So it comes up a little bit, a little bit stronger in there. More lizard and crimson paints, grey, just varying the colour up in the sky. And that's coming down, something like that. Um, yeah, that's enough sky now. Plug it to, to over the top. I'm just going to use a piece of tissue just to stick out a few little clouds. There's one up there, one on the other side, and there's one down there. Well done. Just watch the pools of water that gather at the bottom of the paper. Just, just soak them up with your hairs on your brush. Um, so next we've got these, this distant land. So. All the sky colours on the brush, and then depending on how wet the paper still is, will determine how it goes on there. Because the paper's still wet, we won't get a hard edge. So we're going to go like that. You can see how it's nice and soft. If that's the effect you're after, um, I'm just wondering how well you're hardly going to see it against this sky. I'm wondering whether to dry the paper and then put it on, but. Uh, well, I think I'll dry it because it's not really showing up very well. I don't know, that, that should dry just enough. I see the difference now when I put it on. See how much stronger that looks now. It's really showing up. I just clean my brush, take the excess off on the tea towel, and then just pull the rest down and get a sort of nice, sort of misty, misty look going. I mean, what? What's needed? To, I'm just giving it a bit of I mean, if you put it 
put another layer on. Maybe more raw sienna. Well, all those sky colours again, really. So put another, another layer on. Like, and it seems, just makes it look as if there's some like mist between those two peaks. And just dipping the tip into the water, just so it's nice and, and light at the bottom. Coming down to next to nothing down there. And again, so you've got sort of a bit of mist down in this valley, and then a bit more mist in front of it. You see how the paper stretched a little bit? It's coming away from the board, so. That'll stop it from going all um, crinkly and um, cockled, as they call it. Just watching these pools of water along the bottom, so I'm just going to soak those up with this t-shirt. Otherwise, they'll start creeping off if you don't watch, if you're careful. Um, now, over on this side, along here, we've got a few little faint trees in the painting, so let's put them in next. So I'm just going to go a bit of, a bit of raw sienna, a bit of green. A little bit of blue, and then there's somewhere, somewhere around here. So I'm just using the corner of the brush, a bit more green, just, just fairly the height. They were all the same height, which just looks a bit naff. And then, they're all sienna. Something like, like again, just cleaning the brush and then brushing them down so nothing. So that's that's a lot of the background in now. So the next layer, we'll start off with some trees on this side. So. I'm going to have to give that a quick dry. And then starting on this left hand side, I'll just dip the tips in and then just, I want a sort of dark, dark green. Actually, let's go. A bit of raw sienna in there as well. And then. I'm doing something like that, and I'm just going to flick up. Then, just taking some raw sienna, just to vary, vary the colour really, and then. I'm just leaving gaps in between the painted bits. Um, just gives the impression that there's, there's something going on there. The, 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 the patterns are happening, happening at complete random, so it could be absolutely anything in there. But it's just helps add a bit of interest. This is a uh, lemon yellow. Payne's grey, really dark green. And I've got a big, big tree up this left hand side. So I'm just popping in the top of the trunk and then just using the corner of the brush, just working my way down the pay, down the trunk. It gets wider and wider and wider. And that'll just sit there. Sit there. Now down there, we've got. Just darken that a little bit because that's where the building's going to sit. So I want a nice dark background where I can take the paint off, so it'll leave a nice contrast. So I just pop that in there. Don't I? I mean, along here, there's like a little, there's like a fence. So I'm just going to. I could use my finger nails if I had any. Um, let's just use. 
piece of card and then they'll just get, they get closer and closer and smaller and smaller. It's not quite dry enough, it's just filling in slightly, but I'll, I'll just about get away with it, I think. So, I'm going to put the building in about there, but before I do, it's got to be dry. flat brush. There's nothing special about this brush, just a bog standard flat brush. Um, as opposed to this is a, a Ron Ranson hike and I would recommend getting this. I've never used any of the hikes. It's got the goat hair and it's it's a cracking brush. It takes a bit of getting used to but once once you once you've practiced with it you will like it. So what I'm doing is just using a damp three quarter flat and then I've got a piece of tissue in the other hand and I'm just going to take out just the shape of a little building. So starting with the roof. Very simple little just a bit more roof. bit of colour on it. Let's just go Just a little building going on there amongst the uh, amongst the trees. Right now in front of that clean clean damp brush, a bit of raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow, and we got some bits of grass there. The blue, just keep changing the just keep varying the colour. Then we've got a bit of crimson in there as well. A bit of lemon yellow. A more blue. A bit of Payne's grey. Now we've got, got that wall on this side, so I'm just going to go a bit of 
ultram um, ultramarine and burnt umber, sort of darkish mix. And the wall it sort of starts off small in the distance, and then it's going to go along somewhere along that sort of line up there. Just lighten that slightly. Something like that. I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit. Right now I'll do it now. It's partly dry with the, with the um, with the um, hair dryer, and then I'm just going to use a piece of car just to scratch out just the odd stone in there, just to give the impression. But it's a stone wall. Don't put them everywhere. And obviously, as they go further and further away, kind of just faint little dots as it gets closer and closer to that house. I can hardly see them. And they just get a little bit bigger as they get closer and closer towards us. That's all I'm going to do for that. And then in front of that we've got a bit more grass, so a bit of lemon yellow, just a bit of raw sienna in there, off towards the house, a bit of ultramarine, lemon yellow. Mixing between the greens, basically blue, yellow, pines, grey. All on this side as well. And then all I have left to do then is this. Um, just put this path in. For the path. Uh, I'm just going to mix a little bit of. A bit of light red and a bit of blue. Don't want to do it too strong. Um, I'll just go something like that. the greatest defined path and I'm gonna leave I'm I'm not gonna fiddle about with it too much. I could try and make it more a bit more of a sort of sweep by bringing the, the sort of grass over. I'll leave that for another day. Um, we need a little figure walking off towards his house. So I'm just gonna take the uh, number three rigger just damp it slightly and then just, um, what should we have? A bit of light red. Uh, just up there, I'm sort of just shoulders and then it gets narrower. It's going to have a bit of blue. dog with him. And then just 
Schneide. Just a little trial the way that I've been walking. Um, I think just a couple of little birds. I think I'm going to call that one done. All that's left to do is put my name in the corner. Now let's see what it looks like with the uh, with the main side. So here's our painting frame nicely in the mains. So if we just compare it now to the original. So I've changed uh, one or two things, but the, the actual composition's the same. Just I've just changed the uh, some of the elements. I tried to make the sky a bit more dramatic. We've got a bit of sort of the lighter areas of um, raw sienna, lizard, and crimson. That sort of nice peachy colour, and then darker areas, um, ultramarine, paints, grey mixes. To do these clouds, a bit of tissue, taking out some of the white whiter clouds. I had to dry the background just to make this profile a bit more prominent because otherwise it would have just got completely lost in the sky. You see around here it sort of gets lost amongst the clouds, it looks like it could be rain or something falling right back there and then it continues all the way around here. But there's some distant trees as well, just use the corner of the hake brush and various mixes of the greens, lemon yellow, ultramarine, raw sienna. Coming down there, some predominantly raw sienna ones right in the back. Got a big tree here, I just use the corner of the hake and it just gets wider and wider as it gets down to its base. Um, I could have improved on these background trees there, no variation real, really whatsoever, just that sort of dark green, lemon yellow, Payne's grey mix. I should have mixed that up a little bit. But I was just conscious of getting it dark just so that I could make this cabin stand out a bit more when I took the paint off to get back to sort of the white of the paper and then just here got a little bloke with his dog walking up to his house you see in the painting that, that, that walls the stones are sort of quite prominent but in this one I've tried to keep them a bit more subtle they're just sort of a bit of variation in the uh, the wall there, you can see sort of raw sienna, um, ultramarine and burnt umber mixing together. You'd have to keep it fairly wet like that, just so it mixes together nicely, don't put it on too dry. And obviously it gets, the stones get smaller and smaller, so you can, um, can hardly see them as they get closer and closer to the house. A little, little fence post here, scraped in with the card, and then we've got our bits of grass. Again, just try to vary it as much as possible. As you come right down into the foreground. More grass on the other side, you can see from the lighter lemon yellows to raw sienna to the dark areas where you've got your ultramarines in there, a bit of Payne's grey. So many different shades of green, it's amazing in real life. A sort of sweeping road that leads up to our figures heading towards the house. Well, thanks for watching, I hope you like that. Any questions, please ask. Keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.